welcome to the SLND TV Save Our Tigers campaign. In today's episode, we're going to tell you about India's tiger estimation process. It's a massive exercise undertaken by the country. In fact, no other country in the world undertakes something on this scale to count animals. Thousands of forest guards, NGO workers, researchers spread across tiger parks in the country collecting data, putting up camera traps and all the information and data has then gotten right here at the Wildlife Institute of India where the final tiger estimates are arrived at and we're going to tell you all about that today. In January 2015, a big moment for tiger conservation in the country. The latest tiger estimation was released and put India's tiger numbers at 2,226, a 30% increase from estimates four years earlier. We were 1706 when we last and now the methodology used to count tigers in India changed dramatically ahead of the 2006 estimation. Previously, each state sent in their figures, usually arrived at from the flawed method of counting tiger pug marks, accompanied by allegations of authorities inflating numbers. Using the pug mark method, India's tiger numbers were pegged at over 3,000. But in 2006, the tiger estimation was carried out by the Wildlife Institute of India in collaboration with the National Tiger Conservation Authority and the number was a dismal 1411. The new method surveyed sample sites for biological indicators and pug marks. Camera traps were then used to photograph the tiger population and then the numbers were extrapolated for the entire country. In 2011, the tiger estimation went up to 1706 and the current estimation at 2226 is said to be the most comprehensive one yet. It's a massive effort to count the national animal involving thousands of people. No other country puts in this much effort for an animal count, but no other country has as many tigers as India does with 70% of the world's wild tiger population. The first phase was covered by thousands of forest staff who surveyed the tiger parks for signs of the big cat. Based on the information, camera traps were then put in over 9,000 different locations. This phase involved half a dozen NGOs and researchers. In all, a total of 378,118 square kilometers of forest in 18 tiger states were surveyed. For the 2014 tiger estimation, camera traps like these were used across tiger parks in the country. Around 2,000 camera traps were used by NGOs who were partnering with the Wildlife Institute of India as well as NTCA as well as researchers from the institute. Now these camera traps actually photograph 1,680 tigers. That means 70% of the tigers estimated are actually individually photographed. Honest, so tell us about uh, how you choose where you're putting the cameras and, and, and the, the technicalities that go into it. Yeah, we first do the sign survey and uh, we interact with the forest department, forest guards also and then we find the best place where we can have a maximum chances of tiger photograph. Tiger and other mammals used to move through forest roads, trails, animal trails and rows. So on those trails and roads we actually put the camera traps. So we have chosen here the, this trail based on our sign survey and you can see the pug marks here hmm. and this is the tree where we are going to put our camera traps and the height of the camera traps from ground to this we keep we kept it 40 centimeter because we are not interested only in tiger photographs we are interested in the small mammals to be also photographed the photographs and all the information gathered in the field is then sent to the wildlife institute of india in dehradun Spearheading the effort at the Wildlife Institute are Dr. Y.V. Jhala and Professor Kamar Qureshi. They helped put together the new methodology of tiger estimation and have been at the helm of the last three tiger estimations. Right, so the 2014 tiger estimate is the most comprehensive one yet. So if you could tell us what sets it apart from the previous uh, two that you've done. Um, yeah, you're right. It's one of the best estimates we had. We had two before that. 
and the first one was in 2006 where we just started off so yeah. at that point in time the forest department staff was just getting into a new system where they're not looking at pug marks and identifying individuals but they're using a more of a scientific method of using intensity of sign and then camera traps and all that so we had a smaller sample size at that point in time but then 2010 was even better where people got trained they were used to the system and 2014 is even better than 2010 because people are totally into it. Uh, the phase one data was really nice. We also at our end systematized the data entry into a formal software so that the data is archived very well. Mm. Errors in the field are identified in the field itself and they are rectified there because we have a lot of GPS errors. All so right. if, the, if the recording is not done properly, then the location can lie somewhere else. And now the field uh, ranger can actually detect that. At the institute, researchers study the photos sent to them on a special software developed especially for this task to ensure there is no double counting. Each tiger is identified on the basis of its stripe patterns. What we do is with this uh, new technology of extract compare developed by LexCB, what we do is we take all the camera trap pictures that we get from different sites, put it in the database uh, with the camera trap locations where, where it was captured and everything put it in the software and we extract the pattern from it uh, and placing different seeds on shoulders, uh, tail, far hip, near hip, all these things and fit a three-dimensional model which accounts for different angles at which the photograph is being taken from uh, the camera traps and then um, extract pattern and then match it with the pre-existing database and also the database that is being created by putting all those photographs. The institute received a total of 20,000 tiger images from which they identified 1,680 different tigers. And it's not only tigers that were caught on camera, but many different species. So much so that Wildlife Institute for the first time is also compiling information about leopards and hyenas. I just try to see pattern around you. Our main focus is basically getting tiger number. Mm. And associated with that, we are getting hyena, we are getting leopard. Both these animals are identifiable hmm. and we can come up with an estimate. Hmm. So once we, the only problem is that it is very difficult to identify leopards and hyenas because of their pattern and because of their, you know, like tiger stands in front but hyena will be twisted or something like that. It, was, it is always cranky in front of cameras. So your photograph is very difficult to identify hmm. between two individuals because you are not getting a good enough pattern. pattern. So yes, we have undertaken this leopard analysis. This is for the first time for and it's, it'll all be for over a India. Interestingly, the camera traps have also caught images of poachers in the protected areas, like this person armed with a gun and a torch on his head. It's a muzzle load. It's a big gun. It's a muzzle load. For the first time, tiger's cat or droppings are also being used extensively to help identify tigers and record their DNA. This is especially for areas where camera traps could not be used. Ground staff and researchers collected and sent carnivores scat that they found. At the institute, the first task is to sift through the various samples of scat to establish which ones belong to the tiger. We are adding everything. So this is the master mix. After that, we'll add primers, which are very specific for tiger's DNA. So that is how we can say that the DNA which is present in our sample is of tigers. Each color. The DNA is extracted from the tiger's like cat and used to establish different individuals. In fact, the estimate of tigers for the Sayadari Reserve has been based largely on scat samples and analysis. Identify that it's a tiger, and what we then do is try and get individual profiles of each of the sample. So they have developed parts of uh, markers which uh, amplify parts of the genome. These are areas where we, we haven't done camera trapping, mm. and so we've used SCAT to identify the minimum number of individuals that there are. So mm. like places like Sahyadri and Indravati where camera trapping has never been done, we've done analysis and mm. you at least get an idea of whether tigers are present. And so seven tigers in Sahyadri. Yeah. So these are the number of unique individuals. We differentiate between two, but we actually use 11 uh, to make sure that it's... However, there's also been some criticism of the estimation method adopted by the Wildlife Institute. A paper published by a group in Oxford questioned the methodology used and claimed that the statistical model used by India is a poor way to accurately predict tiger numbers. 
This has been challenged by the Wildlife Institute and a rebuttal has been sent to Oxford, to which the reply is awaited. See, we've captured, photo captured 70% of the population on camera. So what we're talking about is only 30% of the population. Then the thing arises whether this 30% is appropriate or not. And I think, I feel that people are misled by certain experts. Uh, I, and I feel they're using wrong statistics in terms of uh, uh, that we have not used uh, probability of occupancy. And I explained that, you know, it's a simple example, what I want to quote is, if you want to know uh, how many people are really believing in religion and, and going to a temple, and if you just count their shoes, uh, that how many they are, uh, and just you say that their presence absent will just tell you how that people are coming or not. I have really count the sign, like what I'm telling, the shoes and chapels, and then count the people coming out of the temple and relate them. That's what it is. So I think, I feel many of these uh, people who are, uh, criticism is important, but criticism which actually pushes us or anybody to push the boundary of science, but criticism to actually uh, confuse people, I feel is inappropriate. We have had uh, critiques right from the beginning. In science, there's no absolute way of doing anything in science. You can have different opinions. Uh, but the fact does remain that 70% of the estimates are actually camera trapped. Hmm. So 2,000 tigers is what you derive out of those estimates. Undisputable camera trap mark recapture. The remaining 200 tigers, one can say there are 50 tigers, one can say there are 500 tigers, but it's just that portion which can be distributed. 30% is the, the sort of estimate. The, the estimated, the extrapolated, the extrapolated estimate. And that's where the debate lies, or what is the best way of extrapolating. And uh, the critics have not given an alternative to what we have done. They're criticizing that this is not the best way to do it, but then which is the best way? They don't have an answer for that. So I think the way we have done it is the best available technique today. And it's a very small error of margin there. And uh, I think they're very reliable estimates. While tiger numbers for the country have gone up, it's not all good news. Coming up ahead, which states fared badly in the tiger estimation and what are the challenges ahead?